We're Dennis and Liz, full-time RVers on a mission to eat, see, and RV our way through North America. After spending 11 months south of the border in Mexico, we are back in the USA on a summer road trip through Michigan with our two friends, Greg and Karen. In today's travel vlog, we make our way to the Leelanau Peninsula on the northwestern part of Michigan's Mitt, which is home to Caribbean blue water. Whoa! This is incredible! Deceivingly tall sand dunes. Oh, that was a mistake! Quaint fishing towns, vineyards, and cherry orchards. Travel with us this week as we continue our epic summer escape and explore more of the stunning state of Michigan. We're in our happy place. Our first stop in the Leelanau Peninsula is the picturesque fishing village of Leland. Leland is part of the historic homelands of the Odawa Nation prior to the arrival of European settlers in 1853, who developed it into the fishing village we see today by commercially fishing fresh caught trout and white fish from Lake Michigan. While the city has grown in popularity for tourism, it still plays a large role in commercial fishing for the state. This is such an adorable town. Definitely worth a little day trip if you're in the area. I don't know if it's really worthy beyond that. It's kind of small, especially the little fisherman's market down in the center, but it is very charming and it's really cool to see the historic aspects behind it. Lots of different restaurants to enjoy, great shops to choose from. And can I just talk about the weather today? I am in a sweater and it's July. What? Where am I? Michigan, your weather is crazy. We made it to our Harvest Host. Brengman Brothers, which is about 25, 30 minutes from Traverse City, which we'll be exploring in an upcoming video. And can I just tell you, it is so lovely. We are literally parked among the vineyard vines. The inside is so cozy and they have great wine. We're right next to the fire, which is perfect on this cold summer day. We're in our happy place. Every morning he brings me coffee. Last night's day at our harvest house was so quiet and lovely. And there's nothing like waking up to a window of vines outside. But like with all harvest hosts, we can only stay one night. So today we are heading out of here and heading 45 minutes west towards Sleeping Bear Dunes, which is a very popular destination here in Michigan. It's the largest of all the dunes. We're kind of risking it today because while it will be awesome to explore, we don't have reservations. Michigan is a popular place in the summer and we could get there and there's nothing. There's no more Harvest Host we could stay at. Backup will probably be a Walmart parking lot. So we're really hoping today goes epically right instead of epically wrong, but we are definitely risking it. There's just no reservations to be had when we were booking. But either way, I'm excited to explore. We're gonna enjoy our coffee and get this RV ready to move. Hi, Princess. Good morning. Are you like cozy all up in there? I am like so excited right now. Anytime we see an organic farm stand, you know we're gonna pull over. And this one's really cool because it's a self-service farm stand, meaning no one has to be here in order for the products to be sold. You just come in, choose what you want. You can scan it, enter the weight, and even pay with credit card. I love it.
Fingers crossed. Five is Empire Empire Campground. More info below. Empire Township Campground. Walk-ins are welcome based on availability prior to six. Arrivals before six. Do you six. have a phone? Yeah. <sighs> so what's, so what's happening? happening? It's a no-go. It's not first come first serve. That's the problem with peer-reviewed campground websites because um, it's not the most accurate information all the time. This is not the fun part about winging it, especially in peak season. There's just not a lot of free camping in this area. The harvest hosts that we saw were a minimum hour away, so now we're just trying to do damage control. Let's see. That might not have worked as planned, but we're going to make the most of our time here at Sleeping Bear Dunes, starting with the scenic drive. We have an annual National Parks Pass, which got us in here for free. If not, per vehicle, it is $25 if you're coming to do this on your own. But I have a feeling it's going to be a beautiful drive. Pierce Stocking, a lumberjack who owned the land outside of Sleeping Bear Dunes National Park, constructed this scenic drive in hopes for others to enjoy the beauty of the dunes with ease. He constructed the road for nine years until his death in 1976, where it was then transferred to the National Park Service. The park considered removing the drive to conserve the fragile ecosystem of the dunes, but realized in order for people to want to conserve the land, they must be able to enjoy it. And so this beautiful scenic drive continues today. The origin story of Sleeping Bear Dunes, as told by the Anishinaabek people, is that long ago, a great fire in the forest of Wisconsin forced the mama bear and her two little cubs to cross Lake Michigan. They swam a great distance and were exhausted as they neared the shore. Sadly, the two cubs did not make it, turning into what we now know as South and North Manitou Islands. The mama bear, who made it to shore, continues to rest and wait for them as the sleeping bear do. Whoa! This is incredible! The water is so blue and turquoise. I never would have expected this for Lake Michigan. It is breathtaking. I'm so thankful that this is a national park for others to enjoy because this is truly special. If you want to go down to the shore, it's very deceiving. It looks like it's just a short walk, but it is very strenuous to get back up. They actually fine you if you need to be rescued. I think up to $3,000 or more. So go down cautiously. Greg just went down. He does a lot of walking and exercising though, so he's in good shape. We're gonna do it. We, Dennis said he's gonna do it. If he does it, I do it. We're probably gonna regret this. Oh, we're totally gonna regret this. I can't wait for the after oh, shot. Oh my god. Alright. 
Oh my god. That is no joke. Yeah, that was some serious stuff. Oh. I mean, my brain wants to like discount the experience a little bit now that I'm at the top and I've done it. That was awesome. Like, I don't feel like I'm dying, but I would not suggest it if you're not like in some good shape. It's definitely one of those things where you get down to the bottom and you think, oh, that was a mistake or yeah. what am I doing? Mm -hmm. But it's worth it. Yeah. Very cool experience. Check mark for bucket list Michigan activities to do. Yeah, the wall. Apparently the local kids call it the wall. Leg day. Woo. We are in the Midwest region, which is a new region for our book. If you guys don't have the National Parks Passport book, it's just a really fun way to kind of remember all of the beautiful places you've gone to in our National Park Service. We have them from right when we first started, 2017. We'll have a link to this if you're interested in getting your own in the description of this video below. Always make sure to ask if they have a park specific stamp. We've had so much fun collecting these cool little custom stamps from each place that we visit. Finish our time off in the Leelanau Peninsula. We are going to do something that is very iconic for Michigan summers, which is cherry picking. Cherries are in season and there's a bunch of you pick farms and we're at one today. If you're coming toward the Traverse City area, you can pretty much drive 15 minutes in any direction and you will find a U-Pick cherry farm. So there's plentiful options and there's all different types of berry farms as well, but when in season, cherries are a huge part of Michigan. We gotta try it. Scrolling through the phone on a Sunday, just hanging around with nothing to do. Summer, loving, give me something. I've eaten a few, so we need to actually start stockpiling. <laughs> this is so much fun. This has been a bucket list item for me for coming to Michigan. I'm a happy girl. Pay by the pound, but I guess they should have weighed Liz when she walked in. That way they can make sure <laughs> how much to charge her when she leaves. It's also a very tall person activity, I would like to mention. The woman at the front tried to convince us to take a ladder, and we're like, we don't need a ladder. You need a ladder. All of the cherries are at the top. Just that they pruned all of the tree limbs to be overhead high, so I guess they can get farm equipment through here, but that just makes for picking from the ground a little, a little tough. We found a ladder. Someone left it at the very back, which is good, because now we can get the high hanging fruit. There's definitely a reason they say low hanging fruit. All of it's picked. It's the easy ones. But I will tell you what, when you were on top of that ladder, it's a little bit scary. It's high up there. I didn't know this was going to be like an adrenaline rush activity. Welcome to Traverse City. We are going to be showing you around over the next week, eating and drinking a ton. No, 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 no. Yeah. All of my friends say, girl, you better Doesn't get much better than this. Cause that man is trouble, you best beware. And go Buddy, down. Bro. No. Bro, oh my god. Come on. No. No. Oh, trying try to film things with cats is a joy. <laughs> To finish off our time in the Lino, 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 I believe. Oh, baby, yeah. 